Hey, this is Justin from BreakingTheCRE.com, and in today's video, we're gonna break down the real estate capital stack. So if you've been curious as to how big commercial real estate deals actually come together and are actually financed, make sure to stick around for this video. Now, if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate finance and financial modeling. So if you're looking to break into the industry or advance your current career, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, the real estate capital stack really represents the different sources of capital that come together to finance a real estate investment deal. Commercial real estate deals can be huge amounts in total, and so most investors don't want to fund eight or nine figure deals on just cash alone. So in this video, what we're gonna do is break down the real estate capital stack and the different components that make up a real estate transaction. Now, an easy way to start off thinking about this is by thinking of the capital stack as just a bar graph. And this bar graph is going to take into account all of the costs to capitalize the project. Now, the capital stack is really just that bar graph broken down into chunks. And each chunk is a different source of capital that's used to capitalize the project. Now, the easiest way to walk through this is through an example. So let's say, for example, you buy a property for $10 million. Now, if you were to buy that property with 100% cash, that bar graph would all represent that cash that you use to purchase the deal. Now, usually in commercial real estate, you'll have some sort of loan on the property, specifically senior debt, where that lender is in first position to foreclose in case anything happens on the deal. Now, usually the senior debt is somewhere between 50 and 75% of the overall purchase price of the deal, which reduces your cash commitment and adds another chunk to that bar graph. So in this example, let's say we have $7 million of loan proceeds for a 70% loan to value ratio. So now with 7 million of the required $10 million to capitalize the project, an investor may choose to add an additional layer of debt to the property or some sort of junior debt on that property. Now this debt will usually be subordinate to that senior loan, meaning that the senior loan must be repaid first before the junior lender gets paid back at all. So sometimes you might hear this referred to as mezzanine financing. So let's assume we have $1 million of mezzanine financing here for a total of $8 million so far of that $10 million requirement. So at this point of the capital stack, you've usually funded all of your debt, and now you can move into the equity portion of your capitalization. Now the next layer in the capital stack that you might see on the equity side is called preferred equity. And preferred equity is subordinate to the senior loan and the junior loan, meaning that the senior lender and the junior lender both get paid back first and have first priority to be paid back first on a sale. But with that said, preferred equity is senior to any sort of common equity sources. So essentially what that means is that the common equity is putting up that equity as collateral. So if for any reason the property is sold and all equity sources can't be repaid, the sale proceeds will go to preferred equity first before any sort of common equity. Preferred equity sources will also often participate in some sort of upside in case the property performs well. So let's say we have an additional $1 million of preferred equity on this deal for a total capitalization at this point of 9 million of the $10 million. And at this point, we only have $1 million of remaining capital to fund, and that's where that common equity comes into play. Now, common equity is usually made up of two different parts. The first is the equity from the GP or general partner on the deal. So this is the operating partner or the sponsor that's actually putting the deal together, and that is going to operate the property on a day-to-day -day basis. Then you'll also have the limited partner or LP, which is going to be the capital partner providing funds on the deal, but the partner that's not actually doing any of the operations. Now, usually what you'll see is that the general partner will fund somewhere between one and 10% of the overall common equity requirement, and the limited partner will fund the remaining 90 to 99%. So in this case, let's assume the limited partner contributes 95% of that equity requirement or $950,000, and the general partner contributes $50,000 or 5% of that total common equity requirement. And from there, we have our full $10 million capitalization and our capital stack is complete. So you can see we have several different layers, but the capital stack is really just the different capital sources that make up the total capitalization of a deal. 
Now this is an interesting example because it shows how a single investor or single private equity firm can invest as little as $50,000 and control a $10 million asset. So that's the power of the capital stack, adding different sources of capital with debt and equity and putting all of that together to capitalize a real estate deal. Also, as you can see, the risk of the investor goes up as you move up the capital stack. So while the senior lender takes on the least amount of risk, the return to that senior lender is the lowest. And while the common equity investor takes on the most amount of risk, that return to that common equity investor is generally the highest. So while a borrower may be able to secure an acquisition loan at a 4% interest rate, junior debt might be closer to 8% and then preferred equity might be closer to 12%. And then the limited partner common equity investors will participate in the profits of the deal and require some sort of hurdle rate to be hit before the general partner receives any sort of outsized profits or promoted interest on the deal. So at the end of the day, when you hear someone talking about the real estate capital stack, it really just comes down to the different ways that a property is capitalized between debt and equity sources. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.